Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to talk about uh, most of my examples will be from the Mars Exploration Program because uh, that's the thing I've had the most experience with recently. Uh, but I can assure you that all of these things will apply to anything you're doing in your laboratory, in your classroom, or whatever. I taught this particular course at the University of Oklahoma for a number of years as well as uh, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So um, I, I hope this will be useful for you, and uh, I'm going to plunge right in. Um, <clears throat> OK. Uh, let me see if I can get this to. Uh huh. OK. Now, how do I change slides? <laughs> Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, now uh, I'm going to talk about collective creativity. And the thing is that people tend to get all isolated and uh, work on whatever they're working on, particularly intellectuals, which I assume that some of you are. Uh, and it's important to be able to create as a team. And the, why is that? Well, increased competition demands creativity. Wolfgang Dimmisch, who's a Wall Street guy, said, today a peacock, tomorrow a feather duster. And individual creativity isn't enough. The whole enterprise has to be creative. So collective creativity is the creativity of individuals multiplied and channeled into products through a creative enterprise. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, you're going to be seeing a lot of this uh, particular uh, slide, <clears throat> which is a creative system. That is, there's a whole system for managing creativity. Uh, so I'm going to go through this quickly now, and then we're going to go through each individual item uh, as the presentation goes along. So first of all, you have to put together a team. Now, by the way, you will note that all of these uh, connecting arrows have, are double-headed. So this has, doesn't have to be done in any particular order. I'm going to talk about it in a particular order. But you can, for instance, when you're over in the production side, uh, you can have a different kind of team than when you're in the concept generation side. So team building applies to the whole thing. Uh, alignment applies to the whole thing, as well as risk management and so on. So this doesn't, I'm going to talk about this in this order, but it doesn't mean that everything has to be done in this order or that it's only done once. It's done a bunch of times. So first of all, you, put, you can put together a team. Uh, that team has to come up with some ideas. Now, an individual may come up with an idea, but the team, you need probably a team to, uh, to make sure that it's a good idea. Achieving alignment has to do with, uh, number one, getting your team all on the same page, and number two, getting funding uh, or getting uh, some sort of sponsorship for your idea. Design and plan means figuring out how you're going to do the research that you're working on uh, or the project that you're working on. Risk management is very important throughout the process because creative things are risky inherently. Uh, production has to do with actually producing something, which is um, uh, often a failure that things are not actually produced. They're sort of talked about and have good ideas, but nothing ever comes of it. Evaluation is very important at all stages because you want to know, number one, how am I doing? Number two, if I'm not doing well, what do I do about it? Deployment is getting whatever it is you're producing out into the field, into the marketplace, into the uh, hospital system, the health care system, or whatever. And then the whole thing is held together with communication. <clears throat> So you're going to be seeing a bunch of these little things, too, which I call balancing acts. And they all have to do with performance on the vertical axis and then something else on the horizontal axis. And it's not really a sine wave, but it kind of looks like that. And down at one end is too little of something. And up at the right side is too much of something. And in the middle is just right. So for instance, if you're building a team, you want to have a diverse team. If your team is not diverse enough, if everybody's just like you, you're going to be very comfortable, but it's not clear that you're going to be having a lot of brand new uh, and insightful ideas that you might not have thought of. 
particularly in the case of a professor with graduate students or a professor with undergraduate students. If the, undergrad, the students are intimidated, you'll be very comfortable, but the students may be holding back on their creative ideas. Up at the other end, <coughs> excuse me, uh, if you have too much diversity, you can end up in civil war. Uh, people just refuse to work together, they just can't get along, uh, and nothing is going to be very productive. And so what you want is some creative tension. You want uh, enough diversity so that you have uh, people with different ideas, people with different backgrounds, people with different uh, uh, kinds of personalities.